Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Whole Body Podcast. I am really, really fortunate to have Tracy McBeath, the health and healing coach who lives in Melbourne, Australia. So thank you, Tracy, because we've had a bit of a tricky time actually recording this. We've done it once already, and now I've dragged Tracy back to do it again for me. So thank you so much. Um, Tracy's a mum of five. She's an author and a health coach. This is Tracy's book, which we will talk a little bit about this morning. You have today. Beautiful book. Um, mama, mama, where are you? You're an author, health coach and coach mentor, a nutrition network lecturer, qualified personal trainer and the founder of the Low Carb Lifestyle Hub. Tracy has been working full time as a health coach in the low carb space for over seven years after being propelled to totally change her lifestyle at 40, which is what we will chat about a bit later on, after diagnosis with a fatty liver and pre-diabetes. Now, at nearly 50, look how fabulous Tracy looks. <laughs> she is a, has never been leaner, healthier and as full as energy as she is today and I can vouch for that because Tracy is busy 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 and doesn't stop she's an energy bunny as an insight-based coach Tracy shows people paths towards real sustained change which we're all after right in the health space we all want that sustained change she runs two long-term membership programs one for anyone and one for coaches looking for mentoring support and insight on how to have more impact with their clients so, hello. <laughs> hello. How has your morning been? What have you been doing? Lots of things. We have a few, few clients and, and just have my coaching group as well today. And, yeah, that's just a, a, another day full of awesome connections and getting to, you know, talk to people and do my do my job, yeah, which I love. Good, good. <laughs> so just getting back to that fantastic intro, how did your – metabolic health journey begin when did it begin how did you yeah. find your way if you don't mind sharing again no, for the hundred millionth time all. I guess <laughs> not at all no 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 because it's actually what changed my life you know a diagnosis at 40 of of pre-diabetes which is fatty liver um you know I, I don't remember having that one moment where I was like okay something's got to change I just sort of was hit with a well clearly I'm not doing it right you know, because how can I have this going on at 40? At that time, I had four children and I went on to have mm. another one. I don't think I was, wasn't pregnant at the time, but, um, you know, like I've a lot to live for, you know, like I, I, I guess I kind of saw my mortality flash in front of my eyes and I had, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've watched family members go far too soon from metabolic conditions that I didn't know then were treatable and reversible. So I think what I what I realized was that I just hadn't I didn't have access to the right information. Mm -hmm. There was something something missing. So you know I was a, I was at the time a qualified personal trainer, and you know we were just taught to teach the guidelines, and I was that's what I was following. That's what I was telling everyone: carb loading, you know, always eating six times a day so your metabolism didn't drop, and all this stuff that I know now was just making me sick. Um, you know, it's like this drip feeding of you just get sick. It doesn't happen overnight. It's just this happens slowly. And all of a sudden, we know with something like pre-diabetes, you wake up and your body's screaming, but it's been screaming probably silently for quite some time. And I just wasn't listening to it. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so how, did, how did you finally hear yeah. it? What, what was the Well, it was around or... the time of david gillespie's book sweet poison oh yes that had come out maybe a couple of years earlier and actually it's interesting i had a client a, a personal training client that had told me about it and i was like oh yeah yeah you know didn't want to listen didn't want to you know how, how ridiculous we need glucose you know how can we train how can we run how can our body work without glucose um so you know i'm, I'm not ashamed to admit that i didn't i pretty much ignored that person and didn't pay much attention to it until I, you know, this happened. And then as things, you know, as it tends to happen, when you start to look, you find things. So I was much more open to looking mm -hmm. and that came into my world again. And it, look, it did, it just knocked me for six when I read it. Yeah. Oh, that book, that book yeah. was amazing. Oh, it was, look, you know, I think 
it's it's a beautiful start because you get to really see what sugar does. You know, he, he doesn't it doesn't talk about carbohydrates. And what I had to learn a couple of years after that was that carbohydrates just act the same in the body. I think that's a big thing people miss. Mm. That you know, yes, oh, yeah, I don't great. eat much sugar, but they have a lot of grains and they have a lot of you know wheats and flour and and pasta and rice, which we know is still sugar in the body. So. My information came sugar first and then that got me to a certain point, didn't get me to where I wanted to be. Um, and then I found Prof Tim Noakes. So he was my second. Um, oh, yes. Yep. Portable. From the Nutrition Network. Yeah. Yes. Well, he wasn't, it wasn't Nutrition Network then. He was just someone Before because that. I was in the exercise space. Yeah. And like, I actually do not know how I found him if it was my husband or me. Don't know how we came across him and, um, but he, he had was starting to talk about the fact. So he found it 2012 was his big epiphany when he, you know, went from the carb loader to seeing everything was wrong. Um, so this was a couple of years after that. I really can't remember. Yeah, but yeah. he was, yeah, him and then a, a, a man in America called Mark Sisson talking oh, yes. about the same stuff, you know, and I'm like, wow, this is just so upside down to you know, what I had been taught. Um, and my husband and I just looked at it enough to know we were going to give it a go. Mm. Um, yeah, we did. And it started a, me on a trajectory I couldn't possibly ever have imagined, you know, opening up my world to, well, first of all, my brain started functioning properly, you know, like mm-hmm. I, yep. you know, it wasn't so hungover or, you know, felt that sort of fogginess all the time. And, um, you know, I was obviously metabolically well. I lost, I lost weight. My body started to work properly for me, um, and that, you know, yeah, it just, I just started to think, well, I can't actually keep teaching people the opposite now. Like, I started uh, to see personal training as becoming, you know, less of a way that I could have impact, and looked more into the the coaching because I was kind of like, wow, people need to know this. I've got to. I've got to pass this information on and uh, I found like, at that stage there just wasn't many, even now there's still not a huge amount of places you can go to to, yeah, you can go to Nutrition Network and Precure and there's a few out there now where you can learn low-carb science, but there was nothing back then. But the Real Mill Revolution, do you remember the Real oh, Mill Revolution? Oh, Real Mill Revolution, I do. Yeah. I do remember that, Yeah. They were one of the first and Prof was involved in that. Maybe that's how I came across maybe it. Maybe that's how. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Maybe. He, um, they did that, the, um, the banting. Um, they had a, a, a like a banting book or something that came out and, and they put together a program that was the banting coaches course. Oh, um, right. Oh, right. That sounds really interesting. So that was, that. I did that. That was the start of, you know, my journey and um. You know, I think from that, I, I I started coaching all about the food, but you know, very realize I realized very quickly that it wasn't just about giving people the knowledge. You know, there was so much more in it, um, and I had to start to look at myself a lot too. You know, I was still mm-hmm. drinking, and mm-hmm. I was still emotional eating. I sort of thought, how well, were you feeling? How were you feeling with a fatty liver and a pre diabetic? Oh, that before was, you yeah. knew that you were. Diagnosed. Oh, how were you feeling oh no I was tired all the time yeah I was tired you know like it was like every you you may you say that I'm like the energizer bunny you know now like that was just the total opposite to what I was like mm. 10 years ago I mean right I just, right you 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 did I sort of justify it all because I was a mum with you know for yep, kids I think and, that's easy I think it's easy, easy for mums to do right yeah yep yeah but when I got metabolically well, I had five kids then and, you know, I was nowhere near the same tiredness. I, it's like a, the difference between someone, you know, that jet lag, you know, when you feel yeah, jet lagged, of, it's just, yeah, oh, yeah, you kind of not quite through it. Yeah, yeah. And I feel as well that that's a story that plays in your head even when you're going through menopause. So you can use that story when you've got kids and then as you travel along to menopause, it becomes, oh, I'm going through menopause, I'm so tired, it's because oh, of this, it's because it's of this. Yeah. It's easy to make up or to listen to the advertising, I guess, and yeah. not make your own choices, right? Well, I think it's just uh, the brain, you know, we can justify anything we want really mm-hmm. and a lot of the time, you know, 
we don't really, we kind of know it's not working, but we don't really want to face it and confront it because we know that that means we might have to change some stuff. And, yeah. you know, then we think, oh, look, you know, it's just sort of easier. And, and a lot of the times it's not even conscious. We're just kind of consciously thinking that. We just kind of stay in what, how it's always happened because it's like habitual living, know. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you're on that little treadmill and that's how you live. All the time. Yes. And, it, you know, to now what I've seen when I look back at that, you know, how much that of a trap that is for. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's a trap. It's because a trap. It just keeps us locked on this automatic pilot. And, you know, like we know there's a book, I think I mentioned this last time to you, but this is, there's a book called The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. And the number one regret yes. yeah. is that I didn't live a life that I wanted to live. And I truly believe if we don't get off that automatic pilot and question and challenge, you know, the way we do things, then life is just passing us by and, and we get to a point where it gets too late and we can't change any of it. Mm-hmm. It becomes more difficult to change, doesn't it, then yeah. the longer you leave it. When, so, like, when are we going to wake up? Like when are we going to start living? I just I just yeah. think that that when I look back now, I'm nearly 50. That would be the biggest thing I would say, you know, that I, I I I woke up to my experience of life and how much of it was I was responsible for and what, yeah. you know, what looks like fear is just an illusion and a part of the brain that stops you from change. And you, you should step up beyond all of that and change so much about your life. But it's nothing much. I didn't change anything out there. I changed no, no, everything you changed it all. in here. Mm-hmm. Wow, wonderful. That's um. I can see that ha- has happened to me as well. Like I've been frightened of doing things and then when I've actually put myself out there, it hasn't really been that bad. And I'm um, taking the lead from older women in my life. Like I've had a group of women that I teach Pilates, they're park runners and they're 80, 75 and 80. And every week they get out there and they do their 5Ks. Love it. Love it. And I'm not a runner and it took me a while and I saw you do the running and Dr. Avi does the running and I think Melissa does the running. And I thought, oh, I can give this a go, you know, and it was it was all right. I had to get there, I had to talk to people and be brave. Well, I didn't really because they were so friendly. It was so nice. I didn't really need to have that um, resistance or that fear. The first run killed me. Like I thought, <laughs> oh, my God, I am not a runner. But now I've got the bug to be running and I'm not a runner. Like I'm go. not a runner, but all of a sudden I've become one. So, yeah, it's just getting over that fear, I guess. It is. And like you say, you know, we have these stories like I am not this person. I am not a morning yeah, person. I'm right. not a runner. Sure. I'm not this. I'm not. They're all stories. They're all made up. Mm. you don't have to believe them Mm -mm. you don't so getting to the living your life as a full goal this is tracy's book which we talked about in the beginning whoops there it is can everybody see and today i thought i'd open up at page two because it's the second of march that we're uh speaking to tracy this week and every page has got a little saying for the day. You probably can't see it there very well. Yeah, I'll every show page, mine. oh, Tracy's okay. is showing really well there. It's got a saying for the day. So page two is you only live once, but if you work it right, once is enough. And then Tracy's written a beautiful little passage about that. So do you want to speak to that, Tracy, about how that has impacted on you and on people that you see and how it can help change? or make people's lives more colourful or inventive if they choose to live once well? Yeah. How do you think that would feel? Well, isn't it interesting how um, we forget that we've only got one life? Like we live our life on this automatic pilot, just like we were talking about before, and I think it keeps us disconnected with this truth that life is amazingly incredible like and what a gift it is to be here I mean you just yeah, yeah, look exactly. at that you know the odds of you being here Linda and me being here yeah 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 phenomenally Phenomenal. rare. yeah um, absolutely and we live in a time too where for for us at least not all the world but for us you know we, we we're safe you know we're not part of war we don't have to starve oh, we don't no. have to hunt our yeah. food we don't have to yeah you know, so much of our life is very comfortable. And I actually think in a lot of ways that doesn't help us because we fall for the illusion of everything's got to be comfortable. And then we we miss the the actual reality that actually 
comfortable life is not necessarily a good life. It's not really a life that is enriching and that brings us all the things we think it's going to bring because it gets very uncomfortable to get step out of that. Yeah, it does. It does. I can vouch for that. Yeah. Well, it absolutely does. But again, that's just an illusion. It's the brain doing what it's supposed to be doing. And, you know, you get so much better at stepping over that and knowing, well, actually, when I do that, I'm stepping into my life and I'm stepping into an experience that it can't take away who I am. It can only enrich my life or I can only learn from it. I can't, it can't fundamentally decide what sort of person I am Mm -hmm. actually just talking about this before in my group because I think this is a missing part of the piece for a lot of people because we live our life as though we have to justify our existence and what I get people to see is that you're here that's it that's it right that's you're justified so everything you do is just about then and making it rich and living that one life so that is enough and you get to the end of your life and you have no, you know in your heart that you've lived it in alignment with your values and who you are. Um, you know, like I, I looked at the two foot, the pictures between 40 and 50, because I'm preparing a TED talk and I'm going to sort of talk about this journey, you know, Beautiful. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Yeah. But um, if I looked at me at 40, I look at that lady who I love, I adore, but I don't see her as me anymore. I look at that lady and if I had been told I was going to die the next day at 40, I would have had many regrets in my life because I didn't mm-hmm. live it. I didn't live yeah. it to the fullest. Yeah. But if I was told tomorrow was it for me, I would have zero regrets of how I live my life now. And what this passage is kind of saying is that our mind is designed to create fear, threats, um, live us in the keep us living in the future, sorry, in the past or... Mm-hmm to help us live in the future it takes us totally out of the present moment and the present moment is where life is and that's just what the brain does that's what all brains do and we we can we can actually help get that in the background becomes like white noise when we anchor um and uh, how we live our life with our heart and our heart is our wisdom our gut feeling our intuition our values um you know like what 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 would you like someone to say about you, you know, mm-hmm. who you are, like those types of things? What are the things that you want your kids to embody? You know, yeah, values I think mean, that's important. Yes, yep. but it's so, it's actually everything. You know, what, how you want to treat yourself and everybody else around you and the world, they are your values that are your anchor. So no matter what goes on in the world, whether we go into lockdown or COVID, you know, or, you know, something happens to you, you have an anchor to know that I can treat myself and others around me in from those values, no matter what else is going on around me. Mm -hmm. That to me is having a life that, you know, is maybe short and it may be quick, but it's rich. It's Mm -hmm. rich and wonderful. And I think as well, um, I agree with everything you said and I just wanted to ask you, do you think some people can make those changes really quickly and might notice a change, but other people might just be on the journey of learning those changes and it might take them a decade to get through those changes. So I guess is it fair to say that we need to be patient with ourselves and nurturing of ourselves before we can accept those changes or do you think it's easy just to click through and have them? I think it's very individual. I've seen people click it for it to click and have these insights very quickly and I've seen others that have have struggled and I think a lot of it comes down to how tired we are with the beliefs we have about who we are and what we're capable of and those stories that run through our head like a you know like on the screen of the tv the news flash that's just these continual stories that run through our head the more we see that that is who we are I think the harder it is for us to let go of that and be curious about what else there might be um so it's much more about it's not to me it's not really time it's about being being curious and willing to look in a different direction yeah and be okay with not knowing see that 
even though the stories may be not right or we might not like them, they still give us the illusion of comfort. They still, it's okay, I know who I am, you know, I know I can or I can't do that, you know, and that yeah, that gives me comfort and that is an illusion, unfortunately. Yeah. I think I talk yeah, about yeah. that in the book. But um, when we let go of all of that, we then are free to embrace what might come up and what actually, you know, is possible and I just think it takes, you know, we're individually going to take a different time to do that. Yeah. And to come down to that, though. I think you kind of have to let, not let go, but allow some beliefs to soften, to allow new oh, thoughts to come in, right? So you're yeah, always absolutely. recycling your thought pattern. I guess along the journey you hang on to the ones that feel, that resonate with you or, or the particular picture that resonates with you. And then that might change again. 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> always I, changing. It's always, always evolving changing, and changing. Which is really, to me, that is exciting. It's mm. just thrilling because, you know, like the more I've sat, I've sat in this and the more I've seen, I, I realise that, you know, the way I see any situation is really up for grabs and really, you know, it's optional. Like I used to think that, you know, the way I saw it was reality. But now I know it's actually just one option and it's only the way I'm seeing it, but you might see it totally different. And isn't that cool? And how do you oh, see it? Oh, that is cool. Tell me that how is you cool. see it. That yes. is totally cool. Seeing the world, like stepping back from a situation yeah. I've learned, you know, this year uh, and just viewing how other people might view that situation is totally freeing. Like it's just, and it's a wonderful experience because you might learn something and you might think, oh, okay, that's why that has happened in you know in my life, or that's why I see this this way. It's a real freeing of information, or sharing, or knowledge, or just living. I guess that's how that's how yeah. it feels to me. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's so, back in your PT days, mm. um, what did your days look like? You had groups of people <laughs> coming to your home, or were you at a gym, or? Mm. I did both. So when I first started out, I was at a couple of gyms. So I would take, see, personal training is generally early morning or evening. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked at that. So at that point, I did my training while I was married to my first husband and then we separated. So I was working when he had the kids. So I, yeah. I would oh. have to work around that. So I had three young children at the time. Um, so this is a long time ago, 15 years ago now, but um I didn't, I was also here without parents. Like my parents live in Sydney. I didn't really have any extra support. So I was just having to manage around when the kids were with their dad. So it, yeah, I did everything. Like I took group classes of an evening. I took one-on-ones. I, uh, you know, did the spin and the Pilates and I used to be called the, the smiling assassin. Cause I've always, I guess I've always presented a, a you know, a smiley <laughs> as I've told people to, you know, who are in pain to do more. <laughs> so many things I learn about you when we chat. Smiling assassin, <laughs> rock singer, gosh, these are new terms. Um, so were you able to bring your new way of thinking or eating or understanding the whole carb loading story mm. into the gyms? Not into the gyms. People? No, no. I, but I didn't know it then. It was when I'd left that and I had uh, another uh, baby. Uh, and then um, you know, I repartnered and moved on the, to the other side of Melbourne. And I did commute a little bit to the gym, but that just got too much. So I I set up my own little boutique gym at home mm -hmm. and um, so I started just training, you know, just local mums really. That was my that was my world at that point because I have very little children and was in kinders and schools and uh -huh. um, a lot of the local mums would come and I did start, I just talked to them while we were training. You know, we would start talking about diet but I, like anything, when I am starting to learn something, I love talking about it and I just kind of do it as a, I'm just learning this stuff, it's sounds really cool but I'm really not sure how to explain it and I'm not sure what it is but you know can I share it with you oh yeah yeah so then I just start talking about different stuff and some of the girls some of the women I still my friends today and they're oh, full cute. On, you know have been nice. in the low carb world for 10 years now so um yeah it's, so you're able to make a difference for them in their yeah you know their body composition and their view of food I guess well, you know, most time. of my clients would come to me for weight loss. And we know now that, you know, really that's diet. you got to look at diet. Exercise is really important, but that's, yeah. that's secondary to um, the weight loss. It's all about diet. So once mm. I guess 
I told them that and gave them that information, you know, they were able to to unlearn and relearn and and they got the results that they wanted to. But I didn't, I didn't, I never really, I like the personal training. It's not me. Like I realised that I I didn't really want to keep doing both. So um, that's why I ended up dropping that and just, you know, I could still do it if I wanted to, but, you know, I really don't have the desire to. You're a bit busy. Well, (laughs) yeah, I can just make more difference. I think there's just, you know, you can put YouTube on and learn about how to train your body. Like, you know, I don't know it's a science and I'm making it simplified, but to me the fundamental mistakes people make are with their diet, innocently. They're told the wrong thing. They've got no energy. Their body's not working properly. So exercise just becomes another something that's too hard. But if you Mm -hmm. reverse all that, exercise totally looks different. It's just you know it's something you do because you want to do it and you feel, yeah for you feel sure great. for it. sure for sure so tell me about your ted talk when are you talking oh. on the ted talk that's pretty phenomenal well, tracy i know it hasn't been um it hasn't been officially oh. uh launched yet <laughs> oh, <laughs> when's the sorry. podcast coming out Jumping. Oh. oh well anyway tracy's looking at talking at a ted talk in the future no no know, yeah, i can tell you because the date oh, cool. the date's been decided so it's 30th of june um but it's going to be the first ted ex katoomba um wow. so, so it's up in the wow. Blue mountains in sydney so what's the how does that feel like from Amazing. tracy at 40 to tracy Amazing. at 50 now you're oh. doing a ted talk how does that feel you know what linda i think it's almost like i've been something's been moving me towards this yeah. point and yes I've had insecure th- thoughts that have said like who are you to get up and do a TED talk yeah I've just got normal you know, normal yeah yeah normal but I've realized like you know it all came together for me a couple of weeks ago because I had to I did a, a talk to some BCE kids that actually oh. was went so well and what I what I did for those kids, I was asked to talk about thriving, and I had talked to the, them the year before, but it was a very different talk because it was still COVID and it was on Zoom. Mm, I remember that. They, yep. Oh, they were just like, you know. <laughs> but I went to the schools. There was two schools this time. I loved it so much, and I, I I had the same information, but I formulated it around the brain. So I talked oh. about how to keep our brain happy and thriving, so it could show up for us, and all the stuff that a lot of people just don't get told. And I realized that from that, that was that's my talk. I've got to. I'm going to talk to the guy during yeah. next week. I'm going to Great. hopefully sell that, but in the context of my what's happened to me over the last ten years and how really I've just helped my brain show up for me. Mm-hmm. That's, that's it. And what what have I done? What are the biggest things I've done? Um, and how you know what if you know I, I suppose that ultimately for me it's been that I've gotten to a point in my life where I'm living a life that I want to live yeah life by design isn't it it's a life yeah, by design yeah. is the tricky thing yeah so you've got your brain turning up for you that and that's true but you also have had to have the intuitive knowledge to know that what you want to do is right so that comes mm-hmm. part in part doesn't it of having your brain functioning better of giving it the right nutrients of becoming less foggy in your head and more clear about where you want your life to be. That's where it started, I think, Mm. you know, for me. But I think it's, you know, what it was mostly is, and maybe this is my big theme, I don't know, but um, it was just a trust. I started, I trusted myself. I was so disconnected as so many of us are, you know. I didn't know I was and but I thought I had to listen to everybody else around me to tell me how to live my life or, you know, it was somebody else's job to to look up, support me and look after me and all this stuff. And, oh, my goodness, I, you know, what a total, it's just not, not true. It's, it's not anyone else's responsibility. It's my responsibility. And, you know, that was really uncomfortable because I was yeah. constantly filled with insecure thinking around it. I, you know, I couldn't trust myself. And what if, you know, even when I released this book, like it's been on, it's been out for over a year now, but the night before it was about to be published, I'm like, oh my God, what if someone, I'm, I'm reading it from my podcast, I'm scanning it for mistakes. What if there's a mistake? Oh in no. What if someone says that's bullshit, you know, crap, that's rubbish. Or what if says someone, I don't know, like all these insecure. We're human, right? we're just human aren't we yeah and I but you know what I've seen that 
well, I trust myself enough now that even if that stuff does happen, I'm all right, that I can't, yeah, yeah you can't right. be all things to all people. You can't be liked by everybody. And actually in the job I do, I get plenty of people that disagree with me, but I'm so okay with that. Yeah, so yeah, okay. yeah, because you know it doesn't fit you. If they disagree, right. it's not right. And I'm not Move telling on. anybody to to do what I do. I, I I said to these kids, Linda, you'll love this story. So part of the first part I talked about with the brain was how we need to nourish it with nutrition and how we, you know, fundamentally we need to understand that there are some nutrients in animal food that our brain needs, like zinc and B12 and, you know, iron. We can't get those from plants. I mean, and... Mm-hmm. I could see their faces. I could see some of the teachers' faces as well. And <laughs> I said to them, you know, I said, the thing is, I talk I talk in facts. I, I talk about the fundamental truth because the fundamental truth doesn't really care about your beliefs. So I said, wow. you have beliefs, mm. right, that may be different to that. It doesn't, it doesn't change the facts. No, it sure doesn't. It sure doesn't, yeah. And when you know, you can't unknow, right, so you know. You see the facts, you read the numbers, you know what's going on, you can't unknow. So then that in itself must instigate a, a state of change or a state of curiosity or a state of wanting curiosity. to know more. I hope yeah. so. I hope yeah. so. I, I think that's my job. Like I see that as my job, even with my clients, is just to create that space of curiosity, to see that, you know, in areas of their life that they might not see choice in, there is choice. But they just have, yeah. there's no space there for them to see that. So the job is to create that space, to see when the when the mind, as my mind did for 30 years, uh, you know, that it screamed to have the ice cream and chocolate because I deserved it and I've been so good and why shouldn't I? Mm. I didn't know I couldn't, I didn't have to follow that thinking, but that was just a Yeah, thought. I, I know, that's the, the thing. That's the thing, isn't know. it? It's <laughs> giving yourself permission not to follow that thought. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? Because obviously we're in control of that thought pattern and we can choose to believe it or not. We can switch it on and off sometimes, but sometimes it's hard. Well, you know what, though? We, we were talking about this again in the group this morning. So I, um, in my group I have a WhatsApp chat. that So I sit, every morning I'm up early and I, I just sit in some reflection and I share some thoughts because it's designed we have to show up for ourselves every day when we want to change because otherwise the subconscious mind is so deep and so powerful that it continually gets in the way and it still will for a while but if at least we've got that space of showing up to decide how we want to create our day we've got more chance of seeing yeah so I was talking yeah I was talking this morning I'm always talking about thought in a different way but because it gets us you know thought drives everything we do Like not your thought, that doesn't drive me. My thought drives me, right? And connecting what I do with my own thinking is an illusion for most people. Mm, Oh, my gosh, yes. Fundamental changes things. It changes things when we see it. And I said, so imagine you're thinking because what we when we understand that, what a lot of us do is we get in and we try and change our thinking. That's really exhausting. It's actually really hard to do. So what I show people is instead of trying to change your thoughts, you get to see what you want to focus on. So if you imagine you're thinking as a bus, constantly going past. Now, are you going to get on that bus that's going to take you away from where you want to go? It's not going to take you to the destination you want to go anymore. But if you get on it, that's where you're going to end. Mm -mm. I got on that thought that said, like, because drinking was a problem for me for about 10 years of my life, that Every night I got on that thought that said I needed to have that drink. Now, until I saw that that was simply a thought that was conditioned, that was habitual in my mind, that I had acted on many, 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 many many times so that my brain had decided it was actually my life was dependent upon it. If I didn't act on it, it would feel like I was so uncomfortable that I, you know, might die. Yeah, that's it's impulsive, it. isn't it? It's an impulse yeah. to follow, yeah. Well, it's designed to keep us alive. If you think about the way we, where we've come, you know, we've been able to hunt and get hunger and get food when we could for the times that we couldn't. It's just a different world now, but our brain's the same. Yeah, yeah. It's so, like... Um, forming a safety net of following those rituals whether they're healthy rituals or they're not healthy rituals you're in that space and feel safe and that's what you do to feel safe and it's it's not quest that's right and that becomes then 
that's how we work. If we don't question those thoughts, then they will continue to dictate our behaviour. Thought mm. creates a feeling. We notice the feeling usually, not the thought, because we live in a world of feeling. Yeah. And that 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 creates our behaviour. So mm -hmm. what you think about me or what you say to me has got nothing to do with me. It doesn't dictate anything I do. No, it's, it's all... coming from inside. Yeah, yeah which right. is the sense to the kids because I told them this as well. I said, how cool is that? Because that means no matter what anybody says to you, you don't have to take it on. It's up to mm. you to decide whether you want to believe mm. that. Or Powerful. Not. Powerful though. Yeah, cool. And for those young ones to hear that at what, 15? Uh, what, 17, 15, year 12, so 17. Oh, 17. I think it's one just... of the year 11s came in to listen to it as well. And I, powerful. what, powerful. Big, I, I would big. have loved, loved, loved to have known this at 17. Oh my. Oh, it's true. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, 17 year old me was, I didn't even know what 17 year old no. me was doing. I was just <laughs> floating not. along on a, just trying I'm to be trying. loved, trying to be liked, just following yeah, the crowd. Trying to be liked, yeah. trying to be loved, trying to be thin. To you know, we had Elle McPherson with the oh. tab, trying to be thin, fit into my skinny jeans. Oh, that was my 17-year-old yeah, self. That was me too, darling, me too. That was me until I was probably 43. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, right? Oh. Um. So what's the one take-home you would give for someone perhaps that, well, maybe you can choose, what's the one take-home um, statement you would give to people today that might help them make a change in a positive way in their life is that tricky it's it's not tricky but it's hard ah oh, yeah it's, so not it's actually really one. quite simple yeah but it's hard because you're up against the power of your mighty mind that just doesn't want you to change mm. anything so it will it will sabotage you not you self-sabotaging but part of your brain will try and sabotage any change you want to make so you have to really first of all you have to really want it if you don't want it if you're just lukewarm about it, it you're never you're never going to not listen to that part of the brain mm. you know mm. you have to want it you have to know why you want it so you know really got a question so i said in the book i think the first insight is well what is it that you want what is it that you want in life? If you don't ask these questions, you will feel like you're just adrift on the ocean. No anchor, no direction, no purpose. We yeah. need as human beings to have an anchor to our values and a purpose. Partic you know, And I just see that as a big problem today. We're just kind of on the routine, on the treadmill. We don't ask why. We don't question it. We just do. So that's why it's hard you're coming up against all of that plus you're also coming up against how others perceive you how you've yeah. always been the social norms yeah, yeah how you feel in there yeah. yeah yeah can i give a little like a little technique that may help the listeners if um if they're curious like being curious is the first right that you, you have to honestly try listen to yourself you know something's not working there's something that you need to listen to it's your body's speaking to you but you're just not really listening to it so if you are in that place of curiosity, I love, I know you know this, Linda, but I, I love the acronym of the owl. So the owl is my favourite bird um, because she's so wise and she's just, she always trusts herself, okay? Mm. So the owl is um, O, when we talk about the O, we talk about being well, O is observing. So what can we notice about what's going on in our inner world what we're projecting onto our outer world, whether we, what can we notice whether we're trying to um, find fulfillment and joy through things like food or destructive behaviors that actually aren't going to bring us those things, but it, it releases a temporary feeling that we don't like. Can we start to notice why we do the things we do? So yeah, that's the right. O, observe. And the W is the willingness, being right. willing. Been yep. willing to be uncomfortable. Cool. Yeah. So what if you're uncomfortable? We're okay. We are so okay when we're uncomfortable. It's just our mind slapping a story on a bit of energy passing through our body. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it, feel the fear and do it anyway. I know that's kind of a cliched saying, but it kind of is. Expect it. Be but be willing to sit in that because if you're going to be willing to sit in that, you will see something. You will see something. And then the owl is, uh, sorry, the L of the owl is living your values. Know what you value. Yeah, what that's you important. Value. Yeah. 
please mm. find that out because nobody can tell you that. Nobody can give you values. You have to know that. And a, an easy way to do it is to ask yourself, what are the things, if you've got young children or if, just imagine having someone that you're teaching about life, what are the things you want them to know? Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You could spend a bit of quiet time just writing that down. Oh, That would be a good place it. to start, wouldn't it? It is. That's pretty that's, nice. Most yeah. people, when I first bring it up, they've never thought about it. They've never thought mm. about it. Now, maybe mm. you have. I mean, that's fantastic if people listening have. But I think it's something you need to come back to often. And it's that it does become that beautiful anchor so that no matter what goes on in my world, you know, what goes on with my in my business and with my kids, you know, kids come home with anything, right? You know, any issue or drama or I have that place in me that I know is always present and calm and can I can connect to that whenever I need to do that. Yeah. And that's because I've I've done the work. Like I suppose that's it, the reality of it. If you don't do the work change it'll just be temporary it'll be temporary all right cool so you're <laughs> teaching online everywhere you have your coaching yeah. mentoring group so you're still doing one-on-one -on -one or are you still moving into the coaching mentoring um, space or I'm still doing one-on-one -on -one. um I don't really promote it but I I still have one-on-one -on -one clients um I'm really loving the mentoring um it's just at the moment I think it's just I, I'm just enjoying where everything is yeah, I'm, cool. I'm just nice um, there's a few things in the on the horizon and who knows where if, if I do get this TEDx talk out there what might happen I mean I absolutely love public speaking I really do and I would love to be able to share my my message mm -hmm. I got I just think it's some it's worth spreading it's a it's yeah yeah for sure worth, yeah. You might be oh. Tracy McBeath, world entrepreneur, <laughs> traveling guru. You never know yeah, what's going to happen. It. Business class, maybe. Oh, I don't think so. That will, I don't think so, but I, I'm enjoying it anyway. You know, and I, I've no, it doesn't really matter where it goes. Like it's just, to me, it's all about where I am now. I, um, I think of like, I'm just like, I feel like I'm just sort of swimming in a, in a cool ocean. And as things come up, I'm like, oh, I might look at that. Let's see where yeah, that goes. Cool. What a great place to be. It's yeah. Good. yeah. And so people can find you on Instagram and Facebook. And I see now I've got you coming up on LinkedIn a bit more often. I'm not very good with LinkedIn. No, I'm not good the with LinkedIn either. It's a different platform. I, I only go on there once every now and again just to dip my toe in it. Like a lot of yeah. my contacts are on there, but yeah. I have a bit more fun on Facebook and Instagram, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for today. Um, I really, really appreciate it because I know last time I forgot to press the record button, but today we both made sure that I did, so we're done right. But I think we had a totally different, I knew this would happen. We talked, it was a totally different talk to totally what would have been talk. recorded It last was, time. it was. And it's just as valuable, well, it's more valuable. I feel like we've had a nice good old chat today of important things that will give people food and fuel to try and make some change or be curious or you know maybe not Thanks maybe they'll sit for a bit maybe yeah. <laughs> all right well Thank enjoy the rest so of your much. day Thank, Thank you so much you, darling. it was lovely and, um, I'll talk to you again soon Thank you bye bye, bye.